Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to a quick little bonus episode for European Universalis 4. Now, in the last set of videos where I was playing as Castile, I got the event for the Iberian Wedding with Aragon. And uh, in the video, I expressed the, uh, the question of, I wonder how it gets triggered. Now, I was really curious about that, exactly what circumstances caused that event to trigger, and is that something you can keep in mind and plan for, and therefore, you know, use to optimize your strategy. So, uh, what I want to do is find out exactly how that is. So I went into my Europe Universalis 4 folder, and in it there's lots of things in it, but one of the interesting things is the events folder, and you can jump, jump right into that, and these are all just text files, and they describe every single event that can happen in the game. If you scroll down to the area marked flavor, this is the, the flavor events for different countries. For example, here is England, uh, all the events that affect it. You can see it's quite a big file actually compared to some of the others, and you can see like there are major nations, and then there's more minor nations in terms of how much effort uh, was put into developing the flavor behind each one. For a very small nation that's not going to be played by very many people, it doesn't make as much sense, I suppose, for Paradox to put in the effort. So if we do go down and we find, it's under Spain, not Castile, SPA for Spain, and we could open that up, and this is the, the flavor file, the flavor event file for Spain slash Castile slash whatever. And actually, the Iberian Wedding is the very first one that comes up. So let's go and parse this file in our brains. You know, at a glance, it might seem somewhat indecipherable, but it's not really quite that bad. So uh, luckily, anything that starts with a... Um, this hash is a comment, and luckily everything has been commented to a certain extent. So we can see right away it's the Iberian Wedding. Uh, the title and description is just a sort of a numeric code, and why is that? Well, it's because um, this file describes the event no matter what language you're playing the game in. Uh, so they have another file somewhere that's got all the, the titles and description in whatever language, you know, you know, English, German, whatever localization you happen to be playing in, as well as the picture. Um, what we're really interested in is interested in is this trigger block here. This describes what criteria can cause the event to trigger. So, let's see. First, inside of trigger, there's this not. And for, uh, the very first thing is that it will not trigger a second time. This is event 3716, so it will not trigger if event 3716 has already triggered. It will, it requires that the year is 1450 or later. It's not an exact equal here. This is for, it's at least 1450. So if the year is 1450 or later, it can trigger. However, it cannot be 1550 or later. So this can only trigger between 1450 and 1549, for example. In addition, this also has to be true. This is an AND block. This has to be true. And it requires us to have the CAS tag, which is Castile. We have to be Castile. And Spain cannot exist. It is possible for a different country other than Castile to form Spain, technically speaking. Um, but I think it's you know a pretty edge case, but it's technically there. So we have to be Castile, and there can't be a Spain. We cannot be a subject nation. We can't be the lesser partner of a personal union, for example. Furthermore, Aragon needs to exist. It has to be an AI. Uh, if you're a human player playing as Aragon, you can never get um, sort of annexed by this particular event, for example. Also, Aragon cannot be a subject. He can't be the lesser member of a personal union. And it has to be the, the neighbor of Castile, the, the root province or the root nation in this particular example. It has to be a neighbor of Castile. We cannot be at war with Aragon. And then this is an or block. So, okay, right. Over here was an and block. Everything in this block had to be true. In this or block, it will work if anything within it, if at least one thing within it is true. And inside of that, we have more and blocks. So if, if I am female, if my ruler is female and Aragon's f ruler is not female, right? If both these things are true, then that will be enough to satisfy this or. So if I'm female and Aragon is not female, or if I'm not female, but Aragon is. So in other words, if Aragon and Castile's rulers are different genders, both of those are valid. Alternatively, if Aragon has a regency, then it's also valid. So if we're opposite genders or Aragon has a regency, this can trigger. So as long as we're in the right year and the right countries are involved, and that's the big thing. It's this, it's this mixed gender thing. That is the key. We have to have a king and a queen. Next block that's very interesting to look at is this mean time to happen. And it defaults to 120 months. And this means um, that on average, it will trigger over at some point in 120 months. And the way this actually works in the game is at the start of every month, there would be a one in 120 chance of this event triggering. So in the long run, it's going to trigger every 10 years. 
Um, but, you know, it might. It might trigger the very first month that the conditions are true, or you might play for 100 years and never have it trigger at all, right? It is random. But on average, it'll happen in about 10 years. In an, if you played 100 games in a row, then over the course of 100 games, it would average out to 10 years in. However, this has a modifier. If Aragon is not in a Regency, then this 120 months is, is factored, is multiplied by... 0.1, which means that the actual mean time to happen, if it's not a Regency, is 12 months, which means every month there's a 1 in 12 chance that it will trigger, assuming it's the male-female mix type of trigger that's going on. So in fact, if Aragon and Castile are at peace and they have opposite gender rulers, this event is almost certainly going to trigger. Maybe not the first month, but almost certainly, uh, but, but quite quickly. And in fact, in my game, it happened the first month. We pieced out and that very moment, we also had this event trigger. So it happened, but we had we, we clearly had opposite gender. It rolled the 1 in 12 chance. It hit the 1 in 12 chance, so it gave us this event in the very first month. Uh, when this event triggers, right away it sets that flag, that event flag that you can see up here, which prevents the event from running more than once, which is good, because otherwise you can get like the same event pop up twice while you're still thinking about it, which would be weird. And then it gives you some options. You can either take option A to bind the destiny, or option B, which is to marry the local talent. And obviously these particular things you can see when you mouse over the buttons in the game itself. Uh, but I was quite, quite curious to see what the uh, circumstances were. So we got quite lucky in that um, both Castile and Aragon, we ended up getting the kind of heirs that would uh, suit this properly. Um, I think when it triggered, we had King Enrique IV. So Aragon must have had a female ruler at that time. Or, for all I know, they were in a Regency state, and um, we got really lucky, because a 1 in 120 chance just happened to trigger it right away to us. But there's some other events in here that actually have like a mean time to happen of 2,000. This event has a, every month, there's a 1 in 2,000 chance of it triggering. So this is a very unusual event to trigger. Plus, it's actually got um, some somewhat more narrow... Uh, conditions. Actually, no, it just needs there to be a Muslim state in the Iberian Peninsula at some at some point for this to trigger. There's a few other things here, but that's the the really big one. And uh, and I don't think you can be Spain. No, that's not true. You can be Castile with no Spain in existence, or you can be Spain, basically, is the way it works. Um, and if there's still a Muslim left on the Iberian Peninsula, then this event could trigger, but it's going to be really uncommon, which is kind of interesting that, you know, they went and coded this whole event in here, and it's quite a detailed one that is very rarely going to occur. But there's a good amount of a uh, handful of other events, so you can see uh, this, this file is actually quite big. Not quite as big as the England one. And actually, let's take a look at the England one really quick, because one of the events I was also curious about is the uh, War of the Roses, which actually, um, let me page down, where was that? <laughs> Find Rose. There it is. So many events in the English one. It's got, it's, I think, it's the biggest file in here. War of the Roses, well, this has actually got, they decided to put a comment in here for the top of the entire block of events. There's a lot of events under here. So the very first thing is lack of an heir, for example. If you, there has never been the War of the Roses, for example, you're England, uh, it's not a regency, but you have no heir. And that's the big thing. If you have no heir, then there is a chance, a 1 in 120 chance of this happening every month, so around a 10-year period is, is the average, that this event will trigger. And all it does is it sets a flag, the low fertility flag. It tells you like, oh, there's, you know, rumors about you or, or, or something. Um, very troubling because you don't have this air. It sets this flag. And then that's all this event does. It's got, I think, unlimited duration is what this minus one is. And then if you happen to get an air, then it actually clears the low fertility, which is good. But otherwise... If you have that low fertility flag on you, then it is very likely, I mean, a mean time to happen of 12 months, so within the year, it is very likely that the War of the Roses will start. So I find that's quite interesting. If you want to sort of ward off the War of the Roses, uh, one of the things you want to do potentially is get in more royal marriages as quickly as possible, which increases your chance of getting an heir. So, you know, you want to have an heir all the time to try to ward off this message. Because if you get that low fertility uh, pop-up, 
you are probably already screwed, especially assuming this ruler modifier of low fertility actually decreases your fertility in game, then it's going to be that much harder to get an heir in the first place. And then there's a bunch of other events related to the War of the Roses, but it's, it's quite the big file. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this look. You can go and take a look at these events yourself. In fact, it's not a bad idea if you're thinking about playing a nation to take a look at it. You know, if you're thinking about playing Japan, then load them up and see if there's a few things that might be likely to trigger. Um, you know, reading all of these, I don't think is necessarily worthwhile because there's quite a few events in most of these, unless you're playing a very, very tiny nation like... Um, oh, it's Cologne over here, huh? written by, by Johan here. Um, so, in fact, there's only one possible, there's only one unique event for this nation in the built-in vanilla patch 1.0 uh, Europa Universalis. Um, so you might you know, want to take a look at here. So we cannot have Bavaria as a rival. I assume that's what BAV is. And it's got to be before 1650. Bavaria has to exist and it has to be Catholic and it can't be a rival to you. And then there's a... Uh, a a clone Bavarian Archbishop event that can trigger, apparently. So that's kind of neat to see these types of little things, and anyway, it gives you a bit of an edge when playing. That is it for the end of the video. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.